Welcome back to Hampton Roads Business Weekly. We're here with Gabe McCoy, co-founder of Pierce McCoy. Good to be here. And alumni of Regent University. Correct. Regent what was the school law. you were in there? Law school. Law school. Regent Law. Regent Law. There are a lot of people there. Congrats for being on the show today. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. All right. So I am an established business. I am growing. And I don't know if I should bring on someone full-time, part-time, or as a contractor. And I know there's some, there's some fine lines there. Are there kind of best case protocols to follow? The thing that's going to drive it isn't even a legal question. I, I mean, I find that what you're willing to spend and how often you need that person's help is really going to dictate how they back into what legal form you hire them. Um, what does that look like? You said part-time versus full-time. Um, I have, we have folks on the team at our firm part-time, but they're employees. So part-time versus full-time really doesn't drive that, that answer. So it's really employee versus contractor. It's really a question of, is, are they a contractor or are they an employee for purposes, primarily for tax reasons. But um, I think the, what you're willing to spend and, and how often you need them is what the business owner should ask. Because that's going to drive it, that's going to drive the discussion. And so when they're looking at this, so they go to, where, where do they find out what the difference is between the- There's a million so. things online. Um, attorneys have the answer as well, but I mean, there's so much content online. The IRS publishes the difference between, you know, a W-2 employee and a 1099 contractor. Um, so tons of content online you could find. From a contractor versus an employee standpoint, what kind of challenges do you see people have um, in your day-to-day? -day. Sure. I mean, the, the number one thing is somebody's scaling, they're growing like crazy. They say, you know what, I don't want to have people on payroll. I don't want them to be a, a te you know, a quote employee or mm -hmm. W-2. So Because they don't want to pay taxes? Is that yeah, normally they, why? Well, that's the driving reason. They want to avoid the, the employer portion of the payroll tax. So they say, I have all these 1099 people helping me. Well, how many do you have? Well, 20. Are they, do they work full-time? Sure. Um, and so you have to gently show them, well, here's the rules. And I understand wanting to save money, but you know, in the event of an audit or somebody challenging their status, you could, you could get hit with penalties and fines and things like that. So it's, it's not about the amount of hours they work. It's, or it is. I mean, technically it's a three-part test with about 21, 25 factors. What type of things are on that? Do they supply their own equipment? Is, how are they paid? Are they paid every two weeks? Does it smell and feel like an employee on a payroll? Um, so if, I, if, if they use my equipment, they're an employee, if they use theirs? That's a factor that weighs in favor of them being deemed an employee. Are they in control of how they accomplish the task? Or are they given strict orders, here's what you do, here's when it's due, and here's how you do it? So if I check any on the box, I have to do one, or is it? I, it's a weighted factor, it's a weighted test. The more boxes that you check in favor of them being an employee, you're bumping up against that line of, of it's better from a risk standpoint mm -hmm. to pay the payroll tax and play it safe. And so, that's my, and so that's someone my would be, uh, they would come to you and say, hey, I've, I, I've looked at this checklist on, on irs.gov. I see that it's here. Right. Can I go this way or this way? And you're going to advise them one way or the sure. other. You know, what I have is I, we have a memo that we give them. We say, here's what the rules are and here's cases in favor and against being an employee from an IRS standpoint. And um, often I don't have to make the decision. I never do, but they always realize I'm really bumping up against that line. I should probably just play it safe. So mm -hmm. that's often what happens. So the employee versus the contractor world, play it safe. I say the business owner has enough challenges. Yeah. Why create another challenge with the IRS? There's enough out there that you have to overcome. It's a, it's a jungle, it's a war every day to succeed. Yeah. The last thing you want is the federal government um, sending you letters, asking questions. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't want a letter. Game McCoy. No. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. <laughs>